Shadowrun 5th Edition explains its character build process in the core rulebook, and there's a lot to it. There's a lot of choice, and it can be overwhelming. I don't want that to stop you from trying to play the game. This video describes the linear build process I use to create Shadowrun characters, specifically a Technomancer. Note that this video is about Shadowrun 5th Edition. 6th Edition has been out for several years now, but I haven't switched to it, and I don't intend to. So this is just for 5th edition. The build process I describe here in this recording is intentionally restrictive. It's not meant to explain every detail about Shadowrun character creation or its magic or hacking systems. It's not meant to open every possibility. It's meant to get you through the character creation process so that you can start playing. Technomancers. In Shadowrun, a Technomancer uses magic to interact with computers. Nobody in the Shadowrun game world really understands how or why it works. In fact, in Shadowrun, technology and magic are so incompatible that you lose essence and your ability to interact with the forces of magic when you upgrade your body with cyberware. But Technomancers somehow bridge the gap and inexplicably use the Matrix without a computer. It would be like sitting at home, being on the internet, but not owning a computer or a smartphone. Technomancers call their connection with technology resonance. Step one, pick a metatype, species. Your metatype in Shadowrun is your species. Pick a metatype from the metatype attribute table on page 66. On your character sheet, add the low number, that's the one to the left of the slash, to its corresponding attribute. There are eight attributes, body, agility, reaction, and strength, willpower, logic, intuition, and charisma. There are also two special attributes listed in this table, edge and essence. Ignore the I and I column that stands for initiative, so you will leave the box, the initiative box on your character sheet blank. I'm using a computer version of the character sheet. It's basically the same as what's in the back of the rule book, but it's easier for me to do on the computer. Step two. Boost your special attributes. Turn to the priority table on page 65. The priority table is a sliding scale for your character traits. It's a little bit tricky at first, but it makes sense with a little practice. For each column, you choose one and only one cell from rows A to E. For example, if you want to be as wealthy as possible, then you choose row A for the column labeled resources to acquire 450,000 new yen, that's money. But that means you can't use row A for any other column. If you don't care about wealth, then you might choose row E instead, acquiring 6,000 new yen, leaving row A and B and C and D for something better. The point is, as the table's name suggests, you must prioritize each aspect of your character build, with row A containing the best options and row E containing the worst options, and you can only choose one intersection for each column. To keep things simple for your first build, choose cells that give you the least choice. This means you have less to choose from, which gets you through this character building process faster so you can start playing sooner. Step two, still, again, boost your special attributes. For the metatype column on the priorities table on page 65, choose row B as in beta. This column grants your metatype a number of special attribute points. It's the number in parentheses after the metatype. On your character sheet, use those points to boost these two values in your attributes section. Edge, think of it as luck. Maximum of six, unless you're a human, then you have a maximum of seven. Use most of your special attribute budget here. Magic and resonance. This is how resonant you are. There's a maximum of six. You're going to boost this to its maximum later in this build, so don't spend anything on this. Just, I guess, just spend everything on your edge. If, if, you, choose, if you chose the human or elf meta type, you might have points left over. That's just because this build is flexible. Anything lower than row B excludes trolls, and I wanted all meta types to be available to you. Next time you build a character, you can choose different rows, so you're not wasting any points. This is the way of Shadowrun, though. There's always a choice to be made, and everything has a cost. Step three, boost your physical and mental attributes. For the attributes column on page 65, choose row C as in Charlie. This grants you 16 points to spend on your physical, body, agility, reaction, and strength, and mental, 
willpower, logic, intuition, and charisma attributes found in the attributes section of your character sheet. No attribute score may exceed its maximum, the number after the slash to the right of the slash in the meta type attribute table on page 66, and only one may meet its, at its maximum. There are several attributes to focus on as a technomancer. Willpower. This is your firewall rating on the matrix, and it helps you resist fading, which is damage you take from using resonance. Make this your highest stat. Maximum is seven for dwarves, six for everyone else. So you can safely, more or less, use all the resonance you need to use. Charisma. On the matrix, this attribute is the basis for attack actions. Intuition. On the matrix, this attribute is the basis for sleaze, which is like stealth actions. Logic. On the matrix, this attribute is the basis for data processing actions. That's like hacking. Step four, choose your magic and resonance rating. For the magic or resonance column, choose A, alpha. As the table's top priority, row A grants you a resonance rating of six. Write that in your magic resonance score on your character sheet. The maximum is six. Step five, choose complex forms. According to row A, Technomancers get five complex forms from the Resonance Library list, starting on page 252. As a Technomancer, you have a living persona on the matrix that represents you. You use your Charisma, Intuition, Logic, and Willpower scores to perform attack, sleaze, data processing, and firewall actions on the matrix, just like a real hacker, a real hacker in Shadowrun. Everyday hackers use programs loaded onto their cyber decks to make the most of their matrix actions. But as a technomancer, you can't buy and use software because, again, you don't have a computer. You don't have a cyber deck. Instead, you thread resonance into a complex form. A complex form is the equivalent to programming code in software, except you just somehow make stuff happen. That's the magic of technomancy. When you thread a, com a complex form, you choose how powerful you want it to be. This is the complex form's level. It can be as low as one or as high as your resonance rating, which is six in this case, times three. In other words, you can use a complex form at a level anywhere from one to 18. When you roll to use a complex form though, you can only count a number of hits up to the complex forms level. So the higher the level, the more opportunity there is for you to succeed. After you've used a complex form, you take stun damage, which technomancers call fading. Remember what I said about Shadowrun, everything has a cost. How much fading damage you take depends on the complex form and its level. The good news is that you get to roll willpower plus resonance dice, to resist fading. Every successful hit prevents one point of fading damage. If you thread a complex form too well by getting more hits than your resonance rating, fading damage is physical. Look through the library on page 252 and choose some complex forms that seem useful to you. Write your complex forms in the Spells, Preparations, Rituals, Complex Forms section of your character sheet. Step 6. Choose resonance skills. According to row A, technomancers also get two rating five resonance skills from the list starting on page 143. There are only three to choose from, and you'll use skill points later in this build process to take the one that you don't choose now. Write compiling and registering in the skills section of your character sheet, each with the rating of five. In addition to writing complex forms, that's those magical programs, with resonance, you can now also compile a sprite. When you compile a sprite on the matrix, you have a virtual assistant to go perform matrix tasks for you. There's a lot more information about sprites you can get on page 254, but you don't need to know that until you start playing. Step seven, skills. Back at the priority table on page 65, choose E, Echo, for the skills column. Turn to page 130 to read through the skills available. Each skill at rating 1 costs 1 point. After you have a skill, each point spent on that skill raises its rating by 1. So if you spend 3 points on negotiation, then you have negotiation 3. If a skill has a specialization listing, then you can spend 
an additional point to gain plus two dice for skill tests involving just that area of specialization. For example, the navigation skill costs one point to add to your character sheet's skill section. Were you to take that skill, you'd write navigation one on your character sheet to indicate that you have the navigation skill at rating one. You might spend another point though to specialize in celestial navigation. In that case, you write navigation celestial one plus two on your character sheet. You can choose any skill you want, but you are a Technomancer, so you should have all three resonance skills. Uh, you got two for free, remember, when you chose rows a, row A for magic and resonance, but that means there's one left. So take the decompiling resonance skill at at least rating one from page 143. This isn't a super great skill, but it is kind of important. It allows you to, to stop sprites after you've started them that can be important sometimes. You don't want to compile a sprite, send it off to a mission, and then have no way to, t to tell it to stop. Uh, the software skill on page 145 is pretty important to a Technomancer as well. The software skill is used in most, if not all, complex form skill tests, so get a high rating for software. You can also buy specialization for specific complex forms later on as you play the game, so keep that in mind. Step eight, resources. For the resources column, choose D, Delta. This gives you 50,000 new yen. That's money. Don't get too excited. It sounds like a lot, but it goes fast. The gear checklist sidebar on page 94 can help you focus on what's essential, but if you happen to have the Run Faster source book, shopping is even easier. Run Faster has pre-made packs of gear on page 228, but assuming you're just using the core rulebook, Here's a basic Shadowrunner pack costing 20,000 new yen. You want a fake sin, that's rating 1, page 443. Metalink comlink, page 439. Colt America Light 36, or L36 light pistol with two spare clips. It's on page 426. 100 rounds of ammo, page 433. A knife, page 423. Armor clothing or a vest, page 436. Glasses with image link, page 444. Mapsoft for the city that you're running the camp, you're playing the campaign in, page 442. Standard cred stick, page 443. A flashlight, 449. Respirator, rating one, page 449. And a backpack. As a Technomancer, you don't actually need a comlink, but it's common in the Shadowrun world for Technomancers to keep their resonance a secret. In the game, you're going to pretend that you use your comlink, mostly so a corporation doesn't kidnap you and turn you into a living bot farm. So now you have 30,000 new yen to spend on these important additions. A dock wagon contract from page 450, that's your health potion, and a lifestyle on page 95. Spend every last new yen you have. You can't take it into the game with you. The new yen you start with in-game is derived from your lifestyle, so spend money on a lifestyle and then roll the die listed by that lifestyle to find out how much new yen you get for in-game pocket money. Step 9. Spend karma and get contacts. In Shadowrun, you don't earn experience points, you earn karma. At character creation, you start with 25 karma to spend. Turn to page 73 and look to the positive qualities and negative qualities tables. Positive qualities cost karma points and grant you some in-game benefit. Negative qualities give you karma points back but they impose some kind of in-game penalty. This is my favorite part of the Shadowrun build. Read over the qualities, choose some positive and negative qualities for your character. You can only have 25 points worth of positive qualities and 25 points worth of negative. So don't feel like you have to hit zero karma. There's other things to spend karma on later. Turn to page 98 to learn what you can do with any leftover karma points, but one of the best things to do is to get contacts. A Shadowrunner 
thrives on contact. Shadowrun contacts drive the story. They fill in the gaps that your party doesn't have, and sometimes they even provide or serve as non-player party members. If you have any leftover karma, absolutely get at least one contact. In case you need help coming up with a contact, there are sample ones on page 390, but you can also work with your game master to see who you might know. The additional purchases and restrictions table on page 98 provides six different ways you can spend excess karma along with associated restrictions. For instance, as a Technomancer, you can register sprites to make them appear official to the Matrix. You can also buy an additional complex form, but you can only own a number of complex forms up to your logic attribute score, so keep that in mind. In the game, karma points are what allow you to improve skill ratings, and you can keep up to seven points to carry into the game with you. For information on advancing your character during the game, see the karma expense charts on page 107. Step 10, Initiative and Limits. Time for some final calculations. Turn to page 101 and use the final calculations table to determine the value for the empty fields remaining on your character sheet. And now you have a Shadowrun Technomancer. Shadowrun 5th Edition is a complex system. This character build is hopefully a little bit limiting. I'm trying to protect you from all the complexity of Shadowrun. You might not understand everything on your character sheet, even though it is simple, but playing the game is the best way to get more familiar with all of these things. So write everything onto your character sheet, and then start playing. Use your skills, use your resonance, start hacking computers, and sooner than later you're going to understand what all of your abilities actually let you do. And you can come back and build a better Technomancer next time. Or, better yet, you can do some crime against the evil corporations, gain karma, and improve this one. That's the Shadowrun way. See you in the shadows, chummer.